there's nothing like it. We're like eagles on the open highway. Cool Springs, the actual site and the location, dates back even before Route 66. And the history that's involved in all these little stops. That's the reason why we don't ride the interstate. You want to get on these back roads, especially Route 66, Absolutely. and get to know that part of America that you don't see anymore. All the great things that you find on the two lanes of America. That's why we do this. Hey, good morning. <laughs> well, what a great day yesterday was, and we're in for a good treat today as well. I can't wait. I mean, we learned a lot of history yesterday, and I never knew Kingman had that rich and deep of history. Well, we're going to head down Route 66. We're not going to jump on the 40 and uh, work our way into Oatman. We're going to meet Dwayne there, and uh, we'll see it, him at Cool Springs, get a lot of history about that, uh, and then get down into Oatman, see the donkeys. It's going to be fantastic, great day. but I mean, we're going to go on a little road that's like really not really a road anymore. It's a little piece of asphalt that is original Route 66, and I'm looking forward to that. Okay, well, let's get down the road then. Do it. Highway, and this is a really unique stretch of highway here. I mean, you're out in the middle of nowhere. Well, I think what's really cool is uh, yesterday we did a couple pieces of Route 66 that no one sees anymore. They're dead ends or they're just pieces of the old highway. And then this uh, bypass through Kingman to Oatman, there was a stretch of highway there you and I have never been on. Yes, and that was truly amazing and fun to be on something that we haven't been on like that. That's what they call the new historic Route 66. That was, I think Jim said yesterday, converted in 1937. Right, right. And I love this view right here. This view is fantastic. It's like you got clouds, you got the colors on the mountains, and I mean, usually it's 100 out here. And now it's like a cool weather and it's that winter vibe. When you ride all year around, you get to see it in different uh, perspectives. And it's not too cold. It's about 55 degrees or at about 2,500 feet above sea level. It's Thursday morning. We are going to head to Cool Springs and meet Dwayne, the owner of that establishment. There's a lot of history there. I mean, if you see the peak up ahead on the, the screen right there, that's like where the movie Cars, a lot of it was inspired from here, where Cool Springs is. Not only that, I mean, it's really from Seligman down. Yeah, true. The big, you know, grand cliffs that are out there, and uh, they took this whole stretch, and I guess the directors and a lot of the people came out and did a ton of research and interviewed a bunch of these people, and, you know, it's a, if you haven't seen it, it's, it was one of my favorites when it came out. It's a cool little, uh, little show about uh, how big freeways and interstates take over these little towns. Right, and there we got our Route 66 sign right there. Um, it's awesome because over these mountains is the town of Oatman, and we'll show you some history there, but uh, let's get up to Cool Springs. We'll work our way up to Cool Springs and meet Dwayne, and we'll uh, go from there. All right, we'll see you down the road. See you down the road. We are here on the east side of the Black Mountains at Cool Springs. 
And when we started this project, we started reaching out to people in the town of Oatman. And we found out that Duane owns Cool Springs and a couple of other stores down in Oatman. So we're excited to hear some history from him. It's going to be great. I mean, I love it. I feel like we're in the uh, movie right now, you know, hanging out in cars. Everyone needs to come up here and see this place. Well, well this, that's one ahead. of the first questions we always get. Is this Radiator Springs from the movie Cars? And Pixar actually spent about three weeks coming out here filming. And they had like a little sand rail with all the cameras all around it. And they were running up and down through all this section between all the way from Topak all the way to Kingman, running back and forth. And I'm sure they did it all the way to Seligman and everything as well. But they filmed all this stuff. And it's amazing the time and effort they spent on an animated movie. Right. You know, it's, well, it's a great movie, though. Oh, yes. and, it, and, and that's kind of what we're doing. We're documenting Route 66 from Seligman to Oatman. We're finalizing this uh, piece today. And it's really to showcase what's going on behind the scenes after I-40 came through, the trains went a different way, um, or they could go further so they weren't stopping in some of the towns. So we'd love to hear a little bit about this. I mean, this thing's been blown up. It's been on fire. Oh, yes. um, give us a little it's history. It's got a lot of good history. <laughs> and the history goes way back even before 66. Before we go in inside and talk about that, I want to point out a couple of things that they did use in the Cars movie. Okay? Great. As you guys were coming up out of Kingman, mm -hmm. the, the dips that you drove through when Lightning McQueen and Sally were on their date night, that's the dips that they drove through. As they got up to around here in front of the store, they, she, she started playing that leapfrog and he chased her, he chased her. And then he shot off and hit this curve right here. And then the next scene shows them with their headlights on racing through the Arizona Sidewinder on the way over to Oatman. Gotcha. The building itself, as soon as you come into Disneyland where the Cars Land is, the very first building you'll see is the old Rock gas station. Uh, the mountain behind us, they said that's where Light McQueen learns to turn left by turning right. <laughs> and then also right up this valley, if you see the, see the white stone there, the little sandstone, yes. they actually carved the front end of the cars and put the ornaments onto it, and that became Ornament Valley. So a lot of good history, a lot of fun stuff, and even as adults, we watched our kids watch it. Great show, a lot of history, a lot of neat things to see. Well, that's cool. Let's talk a little bit more about some other historic items here in a okay. few minutes. Sure. Cool Springs, the actual site and the location, dates back even before Route 66. Well, before Route 66, it was Colonel Beale's Wagons Trail, and it's Beale, B-E-A-L-E. -E. There's a Beale Street in Memphis, Tennessee, big rhythm and blues thing. There's one in Kingman, I believe there's one even in California as well. And that is the old wagon trail that was put in after the Civil War by Colonel Beale. And he was commissioned to go along the 40th parallel, and that's why it's also called I-40 that's now taken over all of us. Wow. Colonel Beale, he followed the old horse trails of everybody that went out to California. So everybody that headed to California before 1960 all came this direction. In 1960, they decommissioned this part of Route 66 because it was deemed too dangerous because of the Arizona Sidewinder. That's the 191 different turns, curves, and switchbacks on the way to Oban. You guys have ridden that many a times. Yes. Great ride, beautiful scenery, lots to see. So the original spring was across the street. Colonel Beale, when he put in the wagon trail, piped the pipe over here, and it was a steel pipe, so the water was hot and everything. Well, somebody came through and they figured out a way to do a trickle down evaporated type system, cooled the water off, and that's where the name Cool Springs cool started. Springs. So the, the history of this place dates back. The U.S. Cavalry got their water here, everybody that came through got their water here, and then they started paving the wagon trail from Santa Monica Pier all the way, and they actually paved it all the way to Oklahoma City before they came down from Chicago, and then that became later on to be Route 66. Gotcha. And so the reason why they paved it, well, they were using the ocean as shipping lanes. And then what they would do is take everything to the pier, unload it there, and then ship it back east. Well, paving it made it easier because of the rain, the weather, everything like that. And we figure Oatman got paved somewhere around 1910, 1912-ish. We figured this section got paved not a few years later after that. Right. And then it can just continue moving. Around 1915, all the cars were starting to pop up, everything like that. So they end up building the very first gas station, which was this little black section here. We figure between 1915 and 1919 is when that was built. The guy noticed that people were spending the night in their cars out here because that side of the mountain's a good 10 to 15 degrees warmer. So he ended up building cabins to around 1926, 1927. He started with the two. People were spending the night out here, then they wanted something to eat. 
So what he did, around 1930, he built this section here on, which became the restaurant, which is the main gift shop now. Then he built these cabins for the professional drivers. We're gonna talk about them here in a minute. <laughs> 1940s and 60s, this is the highlight. This is the boom of Route 66, the boom of everybody traveling with cars. They plastered over all the rock, the neon signs went up, and it was the heyday. 1960, they rerouted Route 66 through Yucca, like the way Interstate 40 goes now, right. because the Sidewinder was too dangerous. Now remember I talked to you about professional drivers? They would hire locals, both here at Cool Springs and also at Gold Road Mine, to drive the old Model A's and Model T's backwards up and down these hills. And the reason why, gravity-fed gasoline. Right. They didn't have fuel pumps back right. then. If the driver got stuck over here, he had a place to spend the night. Unfortunately, 1960, this section died. Nobody was traveling. They closed this place down. In 1966, we burnt down. So the family who owned it didn't bother to restore it because there was no need to. There was no historic Route 66 yet. The interstate had taken over everything and everything was just dead through here. Right. So it was left alone until 1991. In 1991, Van Damme and Duff London, they came out and filmed the movie Universal Soldier. So they built a set here on the site, and you'll recognize the mountain in the background. So they built this whole set, and as part of the plot of the movie is, they blow us up. <laughs> now in 1991, it was not CGI, it was a real explosion. <laughs> we actually felt it in Oatman when they blew it up. Really? Yes. So again, they cleaned it up from the explosions. Again, nothing was rebuilt because there was no need to. Well then, a gentleman by the name of Ned came out was traveling through the area, drove by, was intrigued about the way it looked, loved the view going down into the valley, <coughs> fell in love with it, and this is Ned here. And then he talked to the family who owned it all the way back to the times of the restaurant, mm -hmm. talked to them for three years, begging them to sell it to them. Spent the night in their house, spent time with them, did everything. In 2002, they ended up selling it to him. He really built the place in 2007. Wow. And the old green truck that's out front, he actually brought that as to be a yard ornament. The guys that were restoring the building got that running and that truck helped go get the rocks to restore no this way. place. Wow. Now in 2006, we received the Cyrus Avery Award, that red plaque there, for the best preservation project for all of Route 66. Wow. So a lot of good history, a lot of good knowledge. And you'll see even in the 40s and 60s, at the end of the movie Cars, that is the picture they show when the Rolling Stones come out and start singing the song, Get Your Kicks on Route 66. And that's what we that's look like the in the shot. 40s and 60s. Well, let's go outside and take a look at the building, and then I think we're about good. Okay, sounds Thank great. Thank you. Awesome. I mean, this is great, learning the history of this place. I mean, we've been here so many times, but really never delved into what's here, and, and I'm glad we did. No, I remember talking to Ned. He was here, and he was, he had a motorhome in the back here, a trailer, and he was here a couple times, but we have not been able to have the history like this, and we appreciate that. So we'll talk a little bit about the outside here, but you had a little story that you were telling us earlier about the Indian tribes. Here. Oh yes, well like I said, the history of this place goes way back before even, even Colonel Bill's Wagon Trail, before even that, the horse trail. Um, this range, the Mojave Indians were really up in this location a lot. Um, and this is where they hung, because obviously it's hotter down by the river and the river wasn't always running. So they actually use this whole mountain right here, it's called Signal Butte. Radiator Springs, they call it Radiator Cap. And you see where that comes from right. as well. They would actually signal all the way to the other side of the valley, which is where the Wallapai Indians were. Wow. And they would signal over to the Wallapai Mountain areas and say, hey, let you know, hey, we've either got the, the water's running, the food, we want to trade, we want to do whatever. And what's neat is this is a whole canyon. So that was their way of communicating. Definitely. Wow, that's wow. amazing. So they can communicate and stuff. And, the other thing I did want to point out, we talked about the historical value of everything. Mm -hmm. You mentioned Ned. Ned really loved the idea, the historic of it, really wanted to understand that. So his thing was to keep as much of this as possible. Mm -hmm. If you look back at the building from the outside, you'll see where the, see the whiteness that's on the stones and everything? Right. Remember I told you in the 40s and 60s, they, they did the plaster all around the building? Right. Well, that's the part that was plastered. Gotcha. So when the original burned down, it didn't hurt that part. Obviously it's rock. But even through the explosion, it was far enough away from what they blew up that some of those things were able to be maintained. And the greatest thing about the whole story, about the restoration, and he told me this, and this is something I didn't know, but it was one of his last visits with me. The family had separated through the years. 
When he got this restored, the family did an original family reunion. No way. And they are now talking together, communicating. And so not only did he help restore the building, he helped restore the family and bring it together. That's a great story. What better history Brings can you get Brings chills to me. Yes. So you, he had the cabins out here. He had the older building that he built mm -hmm. the new stuff on. And back to that, was it the Cirrus? What was the award inside? Uh, the Cyrus Avery Award. Cyrus Avery Award. So that's pretty cool. And yeah. now it's yours. Well, it's still Ned. He owns the building. <laughs> oh, I just keep to run, I get to run the business and actually spend the time. Got here, it. So. Got it. Wow, all the great things that you find on the two lanes of America. And that's why we do this. Yeah, you need to come uh, check this place out. Cool Springs is awesome. Uh, they've got great people. Dwayne's been great. We're actually going to spend a little more time with him down in Oatman. Anything else you want to say about Cool Springs that maybe we didn't cover? I think we've got just a lot of it covered. Now Except just get your butt over the hill. Correct. And come and see it. Definitely. You know? <laughs> and that's the, that's the one thing. People, people a lot of people come again. and they visit Oatman a lot. And they forget that there's a little bit more of this direction. And not, not just even Cool Springs. You get on the other side of Kingman, there's the Hackberry, and I know you guys have stopped yep. there a few times. There's a, and there's the um, Giganticus Hedicus. Yeah, right. You know, some of these old gas stations that have been there and the history that's involved in all these little stops. That's the reason why we don't ride the interstate. Right. You want to get on these back roads, especially Route 66. Absolutely. And get to know that part of America that you don't see anymore. So get your kicks where? On Route 66 <laughs> at Cool Springs. See you down the road. This is Schaefer's Fishbowl Springs. Schaefer's Fishbowl Springs. Remember I talked to you about the different 15 different springs in these mountains? Yes, sir. This was one of the main ones. One of the main springs. Gotcha. This one runs all year long. Oh, yeah. Got As some you can moisture. tell, they put the stairs into it and everything, so you can definitely find this place. Uh-huh. Oh, I'll be dipped in Pucky. Schaefer Fishbowl Spring, it says right there. There's, duck, there's uh, goldfish in it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on the time of year you can come out here, you can see crystal clear all the way to the bottom. And sometimes there'll be so much algae, you can't see anything. Yeah, it's pretty green right now. Things you see on the road. And we've been through here a million times, so thank you for showing us this. Not a problem. Now we know it's here. <laughs> it's we can part, tell people it's here. It's part of the hidden gems. A little cave here, and I'm sure, like I said, I'm sure the Native Americans were up here a lot, you know, because of natural springs and everything. I've not seen any petroglyphs up here. There is some on the other side of Oatman, though. But if you look down here, you see that little dirt yep. trail right there? That is part of the original wagon trail. Wow. Okay, in the desert, Anything you do out in the desert will stay here for hundreds upon hundreds of years. We don't get the water erosion, we don't get the growth. So when they did this back in 1886, it's still here. Yeah, and it does a hairpin and goes back down the canyon there. Yep, that's why anybody comes out on their side-by-sides and dirt toys, stay on the pass. Yeah. Whatever you do will be there forever. Right, oh, that's true. It's time to start living and get a reason for the ride. Be dead wrong on the deadline Standing on the dark side and all out of time Like a blind pen of mom's fantasize Climb up a zone, light it to the sunshine And nothing's mine that hasn't been given And no one's alive here that hasn't been risen For 19 years I was trapped in the prison uh. Feeling my escape by means of derision But every man-made attempt just failed When trapped in the jail of my own guilt Shame and iniquities I was looking for freedom 
freedom mm -hmm. How'd I find freedom from all of this? He said believe He said believe Come on. Okay. So Dwayne, we've got a special treat here. What's happening? Oh, definitely. Well, you can't come to Oatman and not meet our, our infamous mayor. This is Walter. And he's the mayor? He is the mayor of our <laughs> the town. The elected mayor of Open Arizona. Uh, this is Brad and Kelly Blake. They happen to be the parents of I Walter. And Brad, you want to tell them the story? Yeah, so um, we've had Walters. We got them. We live here in town since we're about eight years old. And Walter was orphaned by his mama. When he was about eight hours old, she brought him into town and the people recognized that she wasn't going to care for him. So the Bureau of Land Management contacted us and asked whether or not we would care for him. Um, they had been unsuccessful on getting the feed at that point. They were, they were, it was either we were going to try and care for him or nature was going to take its course. They are wild animals. There's about 10,000 burrows in the mountains directly surrounding us in Mojave County alone. Um, so uh, we were lucky enough to take him in. As soon as we brought him home, he started eating. Uh, he lived the first year of his life exclusively inside of our house. Uh, he's potty trained. He completely thinks he's one of our German Shepherd dogs, which we should let out here in a minute, by the way. Um, he thinks he's one of our German Shepherd dogs. He's still potty trained. He comes to his name. And you said he eats breakfast in the morning and dinner at night with the dog. So every morning, first thing he knocks on the door. If you look at our back door, you'll see how good he is at doing it. He knocks on the back door until we let him in about sunrise, because I'm awake anyways. And we feed him and the dogs and they all eat together. And then he goes back out and the dogs play with him. And then in the night we do our walks. And after our walks are done, he always comes inside and eats inside with dogs. And, and Walter's actually really famous. Yes, sir. Absolutely. He, he's got Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Well, you know, he's another jackass politician that got himself a name out there. <laughs> you know, Oatman just recognized it early. But no, he, he's out there. Um, he has about 350,000 followers on Facebook. Wow. Uh, What's the Facebook account? It's Walter the Orphan Donkey, and it's on Facebook, guys, or Walter the Wonder Donk on Instagram, if you guys wanted to see. And all we do is just go on walks every day with him and our dog, and they play and play ball. And well, it's just a feel good. Fantastic. He's feel a good. friendly guy. He's sweet boy, huh? Kelly, what, see. what did you give us here? Um, this is a uh, Walter Children's book. There's going to be a series of ten, and it was written by Cat Smith. But it's basically a book about our whole entire of how we um, adopted him and how he was lost in the desert. And so a great a children's good, story. Yep, Turn that good. down a little bit. And, and how do they? Get this book oh, there's Pander. Good job, Wayne. So you can go on his website, and that's um, www.walterthewonderdonkey.com, and you can purchase a book. Dogs. Or they have like stuffed animals that have his shirts on it, or sweatshirts, or there's Christmas ornaments, things like that. You can get online with him. That's how. Who would imagine? Hey, not us. That's right? for sure. Absolutely well, not us. I'm digging Walter, and we're going to have to talk about him in our next live, you know. <laughs> yeah, maybe we could jump you guys in on one of our yeah. lives. That would be yeah, fun. Be We'd awesome. love to do it, absolutely. So we do kind of this, hey, we'll see you down the road. Right. So we'll do three, two, one, and then we'll throw our arms to see you down the road. Can Perfect. you guys help us with that? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, sir. You ready, Walter? So three, two, two one, one, see you down, down the road, guys. Hey, we are at the uh, Oatman Hotel. Established 1902. 1902, and we Carol Lombard and Clark Gable stayed in this room all the time. They got married in Kingman, and there was such a fanfare around it, they were trying to okay. do it in secret. They had to come to Oatman, Jesus. where Clark Gable spent a lot of time so they could get away from the people. So take a look inside. So hey, here we are, we're at the Oatman Hotel. Yeah, in downtown Oatman. Yes. And there's a mainstay here. He goes by the name of Big Mike. We're gonna ask him a little bit about the history of this town, a little bit about his background. So let's go enjoy this conversation. My name's Mike Fox, and I've lived here in Oatman since 1990. 
I was uh, in the water wheel industry most of my life. I was in construction and elect I'm a licensed electrician and all that stuff. I do electrical here. I work for the water company here. I do the gunfights. I've been doing gunfights in this town for about 23 years now. Uh, I've done some mining out here. I've worked in some of the mines out here before. Uh, I, I've pretty much done a little bit of everything out here. Oatman is a gold mining camp. It's not even a town. It was never incorporated into the state of Arizona. It only exists out here because of gold. Gold mining actually started out here as early as 1865. The Moss Mines, it's about two miles down on uh, north of here, down on Silver Creek Wash. And originally it was considered a silver mine. But when they got to mining it and working on it, it was uh, the colonel that was running the Fort Mojave uh, just before the Civil War was shown where the gold, where this gold was by one of the Indians. And so when the war was over, he came back and found it, sold it to somebody else. And they came out and started working it. But once they worked it, they realized it was all gold and more silver, more gold and silver. There's, you know, out of a dory out here, which is just the bar they pour at the end of the, uh, when they get it all together, there's probably 80% of it's gold, 20% or another 10% of it's silver. And then you've got platinum and palladium and a few other things out here as well. And so in 1865, that mining started, but the gold that actually started the town wasn't found until 1895, the first time around. In 1895, a man by the name of John Whiteley was following Beale's Trail, which was a trail that was built between 1856 and 1858 and would become Route 66 in 1926. He was following the trail when he realized there was a quartz vein off on the side of the mountain. At the time, today, the, the Route 66 goes along the side of the mountain. But back in the day, when they were using it as a wagon train, they went down in the valley and in the canyon. So he found the vein on the side of the mountain, went and investigated, realized there was gold in it, went back to Kingman, stuck a claim on it. They came out to, act to work their claim, or he came back out to work his claim, and two men either, we don't sure exactly the details, two men either stumbled across him while he was out there working on it, or they had followed him out realizing that he put a claim on something and found something. And once, he re once they realized what he found, they tried to take it from him. He said that wasn't gonna happen. They all ended up in a gunfight up there about three miles, three, four miles up the road. And when it was all said and done, they were all three killed. So the gold was lost from the four years. Four years later in 1899, a man by the name of Jose Jerez had been grub staked by Henry Loving, a guy in Kingman, just to get him out of town. Jose had been a colonel in the Mexican military, but by the time he got to Kingman, he was a heavy drinker and kind of a bothersome guy. So they, they grub staked him just to get him out of town for a while. They sent him out along Beale's Trail, some around the top of Sick Crease Pass, which is about five miles up the road from here. In his telling the story, he fell asleep, and his burrows wandered off from him in the middle of the night. Most people doing really well, so he more than likely just got drunk, passed out, and got to his burrows down. But in any case, the next day, when he went to go find the burrows, they were standing right next to the quartz vein that Whiteley put a claim on four years earlier. And if you drive up Silver Creek, or not Silver so Creek, if you go up uh, 66, as you get past the Gold Road Mine, you'll go, you, you off to the right, there is a big, quartz vein running through the mountain with a big iron door up there. That's the vein that Whiteley found in 1895 and then again Jose found it again in 1899. Well once they started working it, they got about a thousand yards in the ground and realized they didn't have the manpower or the money to get it in operation. Uh, Henry Loving was actually a very smart guy and so they went and they sold it to United States Steel for today's money about a million and a half dollars. Henry Loving went on to be a very prosperous businessman he had a lot to do with the building of the Beale Hotel in Kingman and other projects across Arizona, especially in Mojave County, and died a very, very wealthy man. Jose, on the other hand, he took all his money and went to San Diego. He spent it on whiskey, women, and having a good time and got swindled out of a bunch of it. So he came back to the Gold Road Mine and started working as a roustabout. But from that moment on, once United States Steel had it, everybody in the country knew there was gold. And that's when the boom of Oakman actually started. From 1901 to 1942, the population of Oakman would have ebbed. Ebb. Usually its lowest was about 8,000, but a lot of times it was over over 10,000 people. And then in 1942, when World War II started, Roosevelt deemed that gold mining wasn't necessary for fighting World War II. He needed the materials to fight the war with rather than gold. So he asked all the miners to go mine other things, and they did. Well, when they left, they took a lot of the infrastructure of Oakman out in order to fight World War II. The miners left all their dollar bills on the wall, which eventually became a tradition for the tourists to stick dollar bills on the wall. But it, originally for them, it was a way to have a drink without having to have money on them underground that would get destroyed. And bartenders wouldn't give miners under credit, because, open credit, because it was too easy for them to die underground, five or 10 of them at a time, and a dollar bill back then was worth a lot of money. So the, they left the dollar bills on the wall, the miners left to go mine the things they needed. They took all of, almost all of the infrastructure out of the town in order to fight World War II. But everybody thought it was going to come back. 
because between 1901 and 1942, they'd taken 36 million ounces, a rough estimate, one way or the other, of gold out of these mountains. Well, 36 million ounces, if that's only a third of it, there's still a lot of gold out here underground. Well, everybody thought it was going to come back, but by 1951, when they realized it wasn't coming back, after the war, there were too many other ways to make money and to, to make a profit on your money, so nobody wanted to come out and put, the, put everything back to get the, start getting the gold out again. So by 1951, when they realized the town wasn't coming back, or the, the mining was not coming back, that's when the county decided to put a uh, bypass from Kingman the Needles going around these, back, these mountains behind us. When that happened, Oatman died and became a ghost town. It went from a population of 300 to three to nothing for the next 30 years, except for 1955 when they came up, Hollywood came up and they filmed a movie called Foxfire. Then they, in 1957, they came up and filmed a movie called Edge of Eternity. And then in 1961, they came up and filmed parts of the movie, How the West Was Won. But other than that, it was pretty much no more than three or four people living in the general area. They didn't necessarily live right here. They just lived in the area. Now, after 1961 into the early 70s, the hotel was owned by a guy that he would open it up, but it was, you know, if he opened it up, it's on the weekends because there was nobody coming through town. There was no reason to come, and nobody really knew about the place other than very local people who kind of kept it hush-hush secret of their own. But then in 1978, when I-40 ran, ran right over the top of the bypass going around in the mountains, that was when Oatman started to come back because more and more people were traveling down 66 again. And by then, if you wanted to stay on 66, you would have to come the original route. Uh, I like to call it the Grapes of Wrath route simply because that those were the people that were traveling 66 at the time, were the people running from the Dust Bowl and the Grapes of Wrath and that kind of that time frame. And so they were coming through, so more and more people were coming through, and they saw the dollar bills on the wall, started putting their own name on the wall, and then by 1987 they created an organization promoting Route 66, and that's when Oatman really started to come back to life as a tourist town because they once they started promoting Route 66, Oatman sat on the longest stretch of 66 that still exists, 163 miles or something like that, shortly out at Ashport to Topot. And so that was when Oatman started to come back to life. The gold mining came back to town in 1994 when they reopened the gold road mine. It's been in and out of operation ever since, more in than out. Uh, about 17 years ago, they reopened the Moss Mine, which is the one that was found in 1865. That one's been operating and producing gold for the last 17 years. You know, this, it's just a it's just a little community stuck up in the rocks where, you know, kind of miss it. Hey, so we're getting to the end of the day here. We just had a great meal inside the open hotel. We saw the room where Clark Gable was at. We had a good story from Mike. Uh, the last part of this is let's go visit some of these merchants and then we'll get on down the road. I mean, and that's kind of the end of our, our leg of our journey right here on this section of Route 66. So let's check it out. Check it out and we'll close it out. Hi, my name is Erin and I'm at the Open Gift Shack on Route 66 in Oatman, Arizona. And we have anything from pottery to metal art to clothing, salsas and jams, t-shirts, trinkets and souvenirs, kind of a little bit of everything. Do you live in Oatman? I do not. Okay. I live halfway between here and Kingman. Okay. So I live down the windy road. Fantastic. Yes. So it's world famous Cactus Joe. He's been part of the building since 1913. That's when they added the porch onto the building because he was too big to move back then. The original building, basically from where that doorway is back, that was the original Hol uh, Honolulu Club. It was a dance hall social club. So people would come in, okay, and they put the gas station up front. So not only they check your tires, clean your windshield, pump your gas, all the stuff like that. They had dancing girls in the back, Full mixed drinks. Wow. You could stop and get beer, come home, slosh, covered in glitter, and just say, I just stopped to get gas. <laughs> but if you take a look now this direction, you can see a better view of them. So okay. how do you deal with that in the rain? Rain. What's rain? You don't have rain. What's rain? <laughs> but so, he has a cousin right okay, here. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, he does. Yucca. There's a yucca tree right here too as well. Now, what it does is when it rains, the grooves in the cactus act as gutters, will actually capture the rain, bring it to the trunk, and the trunk will absorb it before it hits gotcha. the ground. Even with the boxes I've got here and the hats here, when it rains, we never move anything. Really? 
Uh, and we'll get a little puddle. We won't get a puddle in here. Some, you'll get some of the splash. Right. We'll have a river going down the street when it pours. Really? Do you ever water it with a hose? Just no. Never. No. Let we figure happen. he's about 860 years old. Wow. wow. So he's lived that long without me. I'm not going to mess with him. Yeah. Right? He knows what he's doing. So where are we here? This is Saving Your Ass here in Oatman, Arizona. Okay. Okay. Um, and uh, we're probably the largest printer of Oatman shirts and even like the ladies cuts. And we probably have more shirts and stuff than almost anybody out okay. there. So, so we, uh, that's our specialty in this store. And everybody always asks now, I don't know how your group is, but everybody always asks, how do I know it's a him? How do you know? Huh? Well, I'll show you. He's got a little wood. <laughs> uh, so that's how we know it's a male cat. That's very good, Dwayne. <laughs> but no, I but like it. Like I said, people from all over the world takes this photo. He's very famous and he's a, he's a big deal. Well, he gives you, out free hugs if you want to hug no, him. No, I don't <laughs> want to hug him. Okay. But you were our first stop today. Okay. And uh, we want to thank you for that. And then taking the time, you're our last stop today. Ah, oh, very cool. So Glad to you be introduced us to Walter and, you know, what a great town. Thank you for taking the time with us today. I mean, we probably spent five or six hours together, so I know you're a busy guy, but we appreciate it. The viewers will appreciate it. Well, we're glad to and have him come out and visit us. Well, hey, we have a new friend now. There you That's go. Right. That's Shaking what we're always doing, right? Well, thank you, guys. Thanks, we Dwayne. do appreciate you, and thanks for coming out. Thanks for spending your guys' time, effort, and energy in this, too. Absolutely. It's a big deal for a small town. And everything about Oatman, and this is what it makes Oatman unique, almost all the stores are individually owned, so it's not like it's a conglomerate or anything like that. And we don't really advertise. Right. The advertisement we get is exactly what you guys are doing. It's word of mouth. And, you know, if you go on Google Maps, go on the different stuff, look at the reviews for Oatman. And that's how we mm -hmm. are where we are. It's all because everybody loves it. Well, awesome. we want to help. So with, with that, fun. can we do it one last time? Sure. One, two, three. See, See you down, down the road. road. Great time. So go ahead. After you, fine, sir. <laughs> so we are at the end of our journey from Seligman to Oatman. There's Route 66 beyond and, and back that way, but we're covering this section, and we've learned one heck of a lot of, I mean, just so much good stuff. Well, I'd, I'd personally like to thank the town of Seligman, uh, Hackberry, uh, we got into Cool Springs today, Kingman, uh, and Oatman. I mean, we've planned this since the early part of November. Yes. We've actually had discussion with 11 people, shop owners, restaurateurs, uh, barber, shop people. Um, it's just been an amazing trip with a lot of great history. Different way that we're filming it with the documentary style, I think it's going to be really great. But what blows my mind is all these places we've been, we've been through, we've zipped through, we've talked to some people, we've met some people. We got so in depth this time that we learned things that we never knew existed on this route. So if you have time and you can get into the, the under the carpet of these places, you find out a lot of cool things. Well, not only the places, I mean, we went down a part of a piece of Route 66 we've never been on and not a lot of people go on because it's closed. Right. We also saw wagon trails that we've driven by a hundred times and have never recognized what they were. We right. saw a spring today. Right. I mean, just a, a really great run. So, and we met the mayor of Oatman. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Walter. Walter. Walter the mayor. So. <laughs> so hopefully you all enjoyed that. What uh, about 830 miles round trip? By the time we get done, roughly, yeah. So, I mean, I'm at another level. I'm loving traveling, and I'm I'm really having a good time. You're at another level. Yes, yeah, so of just thinking of the things that we can do uh, on the open road. Well, we sure shook hands with America on this trip. and Boy, did we. Fall in love with her again. Yeah. We plead you to do that because there's some great stories, great people. So, hey, what do they need to do? Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Subscribe to our website. Tell your friends. Please tell your friends. Ring the bell. Mash that bell. Give us a thumbs up. Comment. And you know what? We will see you down the road.